This lesson will show how to use the second derivative test to determine any relative extrema of f of x equals x times e to the power of 2x. To use the second derivative test, we begin by determining the critical numbers of the given function, which is where the first derivative is equal to zero or undefined. And if f of x has a critical number or critical value of x equals c, if f double prime of c is greater than zero or positive, then f of x is concave up at x equals c, and therefore there must be a low point at x equals c, and therefore f of c is a relative minimum. If f double prime of c is less than zero or negative, then f of x is concave down at x equals c, and if f of x is concave down at x equals c, there must be a high point on the graph at x equals c, and therefore f of c is a relative maximum. And if f double prime of c equals zero, then the test is inconclusive, and we'd have to use the first derivative test or analyze the graph. Let's begin by determining the critical numbers of the given function, which again means we need to determine where the first derivative is equal to zero or undefined. Notice to find the first derivative, we'll need to apply the product rule as well as the chain rule. f prime of x is equal to the first function of x times your derivative of the second function, which is a derivative of e to the power of two x, plus the second function of e to the power of two x times your derivative of the first function, which is a derivative of x. This gives us f prime of x equals x times the derivative of e to the power of two x is e to the power of two x times the derivative of two x, which is two. e to the power of two x times two is two times e to the power of two x. And then we have plus e to the power of two x times the derivative of x, which is equal to one. Simplifying, we have f prime of x equals two x e to the two x plus e to the two x. There are no values of x where the first derivative is undefined, and therefore to find any critical numbers, we set the first derivative equal to zero and solve. Let's first factor out the greatest common factor of e to the power of two x, which gives us e to the power of two x times the quantity two x plus one equals zero. e to the power of two x is never equal to zero. The first derivative is only equal to zero when two x plus one equals zero. Solving for x here, we subtract one on both sides and then divide by two. We only have one critical number, which is x equals negative one half. Let's go ahead and record this above. And now we are going to determine the second derivative so that we can determine the sign of the second derivative at the critical number of x equals negative one half. To find the second derivative, we determine the derivative of the first derivative in the form of f prime of x equals two x e to the two x plus e to the two x. f double prime of x is equal to the derivative of the first derivative or the derivative of two x e to the two x plus e to the two x. And again, notice how we have to apply the product rule to differentiate two x e to the two x. We have f double prime of x equals the first function of two x times the derivative of e to the two x which we already know is e to the two x times two or two e to the two x, and then plus the second function of e to the two x times the derivative of the first function, which is two x, the derivative of two x is equal to two, and then plus the derivative of e to the two x, which is two e to the two x. Simplifying, we have f double prime of x equals four x e to the two x and then we have plus two e to the two x plus two e to the two x, which is plus four e to the two x. And now that we have the second derivative, we need to determine the sign of the second derivative at the critical number x equals negative one half. So f double prime of negative one half is equal to four times negative one half times e to the power of two times negative one half plus four times e to the power of two times negative one half. Simplifying, we have negative two e to the power of negative one plus four e to the power of negative one, which we can also write as negative two divided by e plus four 
divided by e. Simplifying, we have two divided by e, which is going to be positive or greater than zero, which indicates f of x is concave up at x equals negative one half. So if the function is concave up at x equals negative one half, it would look something like this, which means at x equals negative one half, we have a low point, and therefore f of negative one half would have to be a relative minimum. So below let's state the relative minimum is f of negative one half. We'll determine this function value here in just a moment at x equals negative one half. So again, the last step here is to determine the exact relative minimum function value by determining f of negative one half. And we also know we aren't going to have a relative max, so let's go ahead and state none and none. So again, for our last step, we'll determine the relative minimum function value by determining f of negative one half. f of negative one half is equal to negative one half times e raised to the power of two times negative one half which is equal to negative one half times e to the power of negative one, which we can also write as negative one divided by two e, which is a decimal would be approximately negative 0 0.184. But again, we're going to give the exact value of negative one divided by two e. Before we go, let's verify this graphically. In blue, we have the graph of the original function, f of x equals x times e to the power of two x. Notice how the graph does have a low point here where the x coordinate is negative 0 0.5 or negative 1 half, and the y value or function value is exactly negative one divided by two e, which we can see here is approximately negative 0 0.184. And the graph also verifies the function is concave up at this low point. I hope you found this helpful.